It's a nice integration of tech, but it's not needed. You have all this real estate space down here to put these buttons as hard physical. And I hope you enjoy. Today we're taking a look at an exciting car. I'm a big fan of hatchbacks, liftbacks, anything that isn't a sedan profile, wagons, uh, with some SUV utility. I'm joined by my buddy Milo. Today we're taking a look at the Volkswagen GTI. This is the 2022 Volkswagen GTI Autobahn trim. This is the top trim, I think it MSRPs for about $38,000, $39,000. The G GTI starts around $29,000 to $30,000. This is the hot hatch. This is Volkswagen's economical performance hatchback. So four doors, five-ish seats, and a hatch in the rear. So we'll check that out. First thing, let's fire this up. And we'll take a walk around. You gonna be okay, buddy? You gonna be okay? Smile for the camera. So for 2022, Volkswagen has redesigned the GTI. You know, I was just talking to my dad about this car and he had a uh, Volkswagen GTI in the early 90s. And he said those cars were extremely boxy. And here's the redesign. So has that signature boxy profile in the rear with the hatch. This is the redesigned GTI. So we got these 19 inch wheels, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. GTI badge on the side in red. This is the Autobahn trim, top trim. Got an adaptive sports suspension. The standard suspension has been retuned to provide uh, a better ride, but also more handability when it comes to refinement. 235, 35, R19 tires. The guy who owns this car has all seasons up front, summers in the rear. Nice red brake calipers. Hi, buddy. I'm okay. Let's check out what makes this so special as a hatchback. Fail. So, hatchback. While it isn't the biggest amount of storage, it's very practical for uh, the type of cargo you can put in when you fold down those rear seats. Yeah, we got all of our kits in here, roadside assistant kit. And I don't believe we have, oh, we do, we have a spare tire underneath. That's pretty cool. In a car of this size, that's German. Got this cargo divider, which definitely impedes in some of the rear practicality. But yeah, hatchback. And then we have these grab handles, tells you right there, on both sides. That's how I'd close mine. If I had one, dual exhaust tips in the back. I think they're real. Let's check out the back seat room. So see behind myself. Hey buddy, excuse me, excuse me. Let me get in, let me get in, okay. So he seated behind myself at five foot nine, about six inches of leg room. Uh, pretty similar to some other cars in this class. Um, you know, this kind of competes with a Mazda 3 Turbo, but it has a much more usable back seat, especially in that hatchback form for the Mazda. Um, this would compete, oh, hi, good buddy, good buddy. But yeah, I got maybe about an inch or so of headroom, but I could put my head all the way back on the headrest. Yeah, nice looking bucket seats back here. They're pretty well bolstered. I'm a fan of them. Heated seats in the back. And a climate control, we'll get that going. Make sure this is not blowing directly on you. In terms of materials back here, some soft plastic at the top, a little leather here, speaker grill. This has the Harman Kardon upgraded sound that comes with the Audubon trim. And then the materials kind of get cheaper as you go down to the speaker grill. But nice leather on the armrest itself, pretty, you know, cheap plastic, but this car is, you know, at 38 grand and a lot of those materials don't get upgraded. What you're getting is ventilated seats, upgraded suspension or adaptive suspension and all that. 
Some cup holders right here and a ski pass there. Yeah, oh, a good amount of space back here. I feel like I have the same amount of space in my Audi S4. So this car might have a smaller trunk, but it's a little bit more practical. It's definitely lighter on the road. I could definitely feel that. All right, let's check out that engine. Volkswagen has managed to make their ubiquitous 2.0 four-cylinder turbo have more power. <laughs> Hud Struts makes about 241 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. It's up about 13 and 15, I believe, in each category. Sitting transversely, made it to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. The car gets about 25 mpg in the city, 34 on the highway. Extremely efficient, 2.0 turbo with a dual clutch. Front wheel drive, limited slip differential, really puts the power down well in this performance car. These nice headlights, nice look, nice stance. See the gas tank, I believe this takes regular fuel. 87 octane, pretty sweet. I know Milo. Smart uh, keyless entry on the front doors. Let's check out this redesigned interior for 2022. We'll take one last side profile look. Nice redesigned interior in this 2022. Very minimalistic, looks modern. Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. It's okay. We got these nice seats, GTI stitching, gray, multi-tone with some red contrast. Looks nice, ventilated, perforated and heated seats. Through memory settings, that's pretty nice. Power adjustment and some lumbar adjustment. Seat on the passenger side is actually manual, except for the uh, rear part. Pretty interesting. All right, now this is the controversial part of the GTI. Who's in the key? Fuck. Well, seeing as I just dropped the key, here's the key. Nice. Looks very nice. Very high quality. This, you know, panel black is kind of the theme of this car. Lock, unlock. Pop the trunk because we have panel black in a lot of spots that are high con touch. And that would be my biggest complaint of this car is that you're gonna have to keep that pretty clean. You know, right here where you're touching your, your, your shifter and stuff and your parking brake, lots of piano black. But anyways, controversy with the GTI is all these capacitive touch buttons, control your climate, audio. Your temperature controls are controlled by touch, but then you can bring up this climate menu from here, change your fan speed, control the passenger, and then even then, no physical button for the heated seats and uh, ventilated seats. You do get them though, that's pretty nice. I don't even have that on my car. It's just a lot of buttons are, or functions are multi-touch into this system. I do think it's very, um, very modern, very sleek. It's a, it takes a little bit to get used to, like anything else, it takes a little bit to get used to. We're going to the steering wheel, nice leather steering wheel with a flat bottom, GTI, this red is awesome. You got your adaptive cruise control, lane centering functionality over here. Over here you got some infotainment controls, a heated steering wheel, and this view button so you can change between the center miles per hour view to this view, to a map, driver assistance, and back to the gauge. The system is relatively snappy. Lots of functionality. This uh, trim comes with the ambient lighting. Do a night drive on this, you'll be able to see all these. I do like this constant home button, very nice. Vehicle settings. This is kind of a tough one because a lot of your, uh, your functionalities, like your ESC system, are buried in multiple clicks. So let's say you wanna, you know, you're in Apple CarPlay and you wanna get into performance driving. You have to go here, two, one swipe, and then hit ESC Sport, 
or ESC off and then confirm. It's a nice integration of tech, but it's not needed. You have all this real estate space down here to put these buttons as hard physical buttons. You do get these quick menus, uh, quick access buttons for certain menus, the climate we saw before, drive mode, uh, a parking menu, and your uh, parking, uh, parking camera does turn with the lines. You do get a wider view option. And then your driver assistance. And this is an interesting one because you have to tap on each part to kind of um, of the display to adjust certain settings. It's almost like a little game. Why? Like why? I actually think this is worse than um than the climate menu. In terms of designs back here and here, I'll touch materials up here. Some like carbon fiber that looks pretty good. Doesn't feel too tinny. These seats are pretty comfortable and nice leather. Yeah, no, this, this feels like a well-sorted cabin for $38,000. The only other thing we have in here is the sunroof. It's nice to have. We're gonna start this off in comfort. We do have some customizability within, uh, between different drive modes, eco, comfort, sport, and then custom. And then we can further customize that to do steering, drivetrain, engine sound, dive for cruise control, light assist, climate control. Lots of different options in here. Nice Volkswagen soft limiter. Starting off in comfort. Just have to push on the gas, break out of that parking brake. Uh, we do have a heads up display. Starting off in comfort, that adaptive suspension gives those spring rates a much nicer ride. Even with those 19 inch wheels, feels very comfortable, but not too boat-like. It's a much smaller car, so I'm already feeling how much lighter it is than my Audi. Start stop system is available. So let's see as we go up to the stop sign how it handles. Pretty smooth transitions on and off. Doesn't roll into the stop like I'm used to um, in the Audi, but still not very intrusive. I'm gonna turn that off though. No, I don't like that. Brakes have good bite. Steering wheel feels very nice in the hand. Pretty, uh, pretty thin, but it has good sport grips up here. Very nice driver position. I have great visibility with these pillars. I can get the steering wheel into a nice, good driving position. I do like a upright driving position. And obviously I am an average size adult, so plenty of room in the back, but I can still be very comfortable. I do wish the steering wheel did come out a little bit more. Cruising along, you don't really hear much of the engine. Definitely a lot of uh, road and tire noise from those summers up front and the 19 inch wheels. Yeah, very comfortable on these roads. It's a pretty uh, rough section of road and it's handling it very well. Going to sport. 
automatically puts the transmission in S mode. Do hear an enhanced engine note. That power is very well delivered, especially with that limited slip differential taking us around the corner. I heard a little burble on the uh, downshift from uh, third to uh, fourth. The suspension definitely tightens up, um, but it still feels manageable. Do you get paddle shifters? Pretty responsive, you love those dual clutches. All right, ready? Let's go. Brakes are good, get you around that corner. I like that little burble on the uh, on the upshift. Reminds me of uh, the Audi S3 and the Golf R. So that's good to see. How does this handle a corner? some backfires off the rear end exhaust. Can we sneak a quick launch in? Just gonna do a brake boost at launch. A little chirp on the tires there, but very good performance. I'm liking these backfires from that dual clutch. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Cruising on the highway, we'll put it back in comfort, set our lane keeping, and we'll set adaptive cruise control with this button. There we go. And then we could select between travel assist and just normal uh, adaptive cruise control. Travel Assist will steer you in the lane. Does a pretty good job. Telling me to take over steering. See how it overtakes this car. Put it up and... Uh, I like how it already starts to accelerate and then this guy merged over and the car slowed down to response. It's pretty good. Pretty responsive system. Up to highway speeds, hear that wheel and tire noise. Had to speak up a little bit. Again, this is an economical performance car. You're not going to get the extra sound deadening and refinement you would in like, let's say an Audi S3, which also costs, you know, almost 20 grand more. Can't even get ventilated seats on the Audi, so. Do you get blind spot monitoring, letting you know that there's cars in your blind spot. Throw it back into sport. <laughs> like you're in the backfires. And on the overrun too, you get a little pop.
Volkswagen's Sound Doctor, their uh, enhanced engine note does a good job being enhancing the sound of this engine without being too fake too intrusive gives it a nice deep grottle sound this two liter turbo Man, entrance ramps. People don't know how to use entrance ramps. Aye, aye, aye. Oh my god. Go! Aye, aye, aye. Handling around this turn is very nice. You could feel the extra or less weight of this car as it pulls you through the turn. Weight balance in this car, I feel like, is pretty nice. You get a little understeer, but you can correct that with your right foot. Mustang is driving like a handicapped person. Sneak a launch in up here. Let's try. ESC is off. Do a launch at this light. Got the car in sport mode. Transmission's in S. ESC is off. Foot hard on the brake. <laughs> so we're coming to the end of our uh, drive and what are my thoughts on the GTI? Uh, assuming this guy doesn't step out and get hit by a car. Uh, I like the size. I like the weight balance of this car. I like the driving, I like the cab materials, I like the tech the customizability of the screen. Front wheel drive cars can be fun. Especially with a limited slip differential up front and good amount of torque, really pull you through a corner. You don't need that extra power distribution of the all wheel drive, especially in a car that's light and small like this. But I think it's practical. It's got the space it needs. It's got a hatch. I think this integration of tech makes it look sleek. And I don't find myself too annoyed with the uh, the climate controls because um, you're just not going to be interacting with them too much other than going to the climate menu and fussing about with all this. But it's not as bad as a Tesla and these quick control buttons are very nice. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like the GTI? Do you want a manual over this dual clutch? Would you prefer the Golf R or would you prefer something else? Let me know with that other 
competitor would be. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Hope everyone gives it a like, subscribe. Really appreciate all the support. Let me know what else you'd like me to drive. 